I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Steve Forbes, who is chairman and editor-in-chief of Forbes Media. Steve, good to see you. Good to be with you, Diane. Thank you. We are talking about Henry Kissinger, former Secretary of State who died at 100 and leaves a mixed legacy in terms of how people are reacting to his death. I want to start with what do you feel is the legacy from where you sit? Uh, Henry Kissinger dealt with the big issues of the time that he was in office and helped reshape the world, the Cold War. His opening to China, people say, well, look at China today. Well, it was not the great power then that it is today. Mm -hmm. The Soviet Union was. How do we win the Cold War? So we made the opening to China and uh, to help uh, uh, defeat, ultimately, the Soviet Union. So we had that strategic sense. Uh, the Vietnam settlement, uh, not very satisfactory, but what did that in was Congress's refusal to provide aid to South Vietnam after those accords were signed. In the Middle East, he laid the groundwork for a rapprochement between I Israel and Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, bore real fruition. So he reshaped the world. He just didn't follow the paper flow, react to events. He helped shape events. And I think that's what makes him such a formidable figure. And he had an appreciation of history. He knew who Metternich was, mm -hmm. the great Austrian foreign mm -hmm. minister who shaped Europe in the early 1800s. He had an appreciation for Bismarck, although he didn't like his handiwork. He uh, understood what Bismarck was able to do because he had a strategic vision. So in that sense, I think he, being an outsider, literally coming from Germany yeah. as, a refugees, as a refugee, he understood America's strengths and also possible shortcomings. That's one of the things that has struck me in, in reading a lot of, um, you know, reflections on his life is, is that appreciation, let's go back to before the settlement, the early days of the Vietnam War and that conflict, this, of where the U.S. was and how this whole sort of um, policy around Southeast Asia came about, because he's very much seen as an architect for that. Is the, first of all, is that fair to see him as one of the key architects for basically getting into Vietnam and how that war progressed? Uh, he and Nixon inherited that war. Yeah. That really began under Nixon's predecessor, Lyndon Johnson. Right. The big mistake they made, uh, Lyndon Johnson and his uh, people, the best and the brightest, was they treated Vietnam as if it was a, like, a traditional conflict, like the Korean War or World War II. They didn't recognize it as a true guerrilla war, which is a very different situation. So when Nixon came in, uh, they, gradually the U.S. Army made a fundamental change in how they prosecuted that war, uh, brought the South Vietnamese more into the combat. Uh, so by 1972, when North Vietnam launched a fierce offensive thinking they could topple South Vietnam, the South Vietnamese won that battle. Mm -hmm. Yes, we had people embedded in there to help out, but they fought and won. So combined with our air power, they beat them back. So in terms of uh, what happened afterwards, if you cut a country off from aid, if you don't give them the assistance they need, you're going to get dire consequences, which is what we're just beginning to see happen in Ukraine. Yep. We're going to continue to provide Ukraine the means with which to resist this invasion. If we don't, we can just look and see what the consequences are. So he did the best he could under the circumstances. And also what gets underappreciated is that the effort in Vietnam, although ending in failure in 1975, in one sense did provide the other Asian nations, and Lee Kuan Yew, who's the father of Singapore, Singapore yeah. uh, was almost uh, in his own way was a Kissingerian figure, mm -hmm. made the point that this enabled Indonesia to get the strength to resist a communist uh, insurrection or communist push. Uh, Singapore not getting overwhelmed. Other Asian nations gave them time to get the strength so that they could uh, resist uh, the encroachments of China and the Soviet Union. 